Tropico 3 is one of the best games I've played in a long time, not only for its gameplay, but also for its theme and consistent setting that kind of satires the political situation in the Cold War era. I thought it would be an apt game to do for this first episode, not only because there's a lot to talk about in terms of like its good game design and all this stuff, but also because I've kind of played it a little bit too much on Steam. Whoops! So Tropico is basically a game where you run as El Presidente on an island in the Caribbean. You make houses for people to live in, buildings for them to work in, schools for them to learn in, hospitals for health, churches for religion, and so on. The main gist of the game is, rather than a game like SimCity, where you just kind of make a place where people work and the way you go, Tropico takes a more subtle approach of giving your people kind of free will. Like sure they'll work at any place they can get to, but when you have more jobs than people, money speaks louder than anything else, so they'll kind of go for places that'll pay them the most. So, to encourage people to do stuff, you need to bribe them. You can do it the nice way and actually satisfy their needs. For example, like, environmentalists will want you to place parks and you do that and they're like, yeah, sure, this guy's kinda cool. But if no one wants to work at your poor factory, maybe increasing the salary might encourage them to go work there instead of their crummy desk job where they actually have good conditions. Stop them. On top of this, you need to win an election every so often so you don't lose your power as El Presidente. So by then, you need to kind of make sure that every single, like, faction on your island is on your side so that you get the votes. Like, you've got the communists and the capitalists as you would in a Cold War era game, but you've also got, like, a lot of other extremist groups like the religious, the militarists, the environmentalists, the loyalists, the intellectuals, and the nationalists. All of these guys want different stuff for your island, so there's kind of a precarious balancing act in trying to keep all of them content without making one group absolutely hate you throughout the game. Oh, gosh, environmentalists. Of course, there's kind of easier and shadier ways of winning these elections, so you could say count more votes than you really should have, and just kind of fudge the results. Or, you know, you can hire an assassin to kill the other person running for president. Or, you know, you could just kind of call off the elections entirely. And finally, in gameplay concepts, you can put money into something called the Swiss Bank Account. It's basically your retirement fund. After all the excess money you get from factories and tourists and stuff that you get on your island, you can basically ignore your people and benefit only yourself. The best part is that the majority of your end game score comes from this. Not actually helping your island become a huge metropolis, if you just add a building tax and that money goes straight to your fund, that's how you score in this game. That is how you rank high. So going off my experience of playing the game, the best way I've learned to beat this game is to just kind of go all out with mines and factories and stuff. You lose a little bit of respect with the US and USSR with the weapons factory because you're selling weapons to superpowers, but it's pretty small, especially when you upgrade the buildings. Uh, you also lose a lot with environmentalists, but hey, at least you have money to bribe them. Wink wink. After that, you can kind of afford buildings like schools and hospitals, you know, actually helping the people. <laughs> Yes, I am turning the island into a bit of a mining town before I even put healthcare in, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. I've also noticed that people don't really mind living in tenements, which are notorious for kind of cramming tons of people into sm a small space to live in. Like, they give better housing quality than, like, shacks and huts, and from experience I've never really needed, like, the better buildings unless I really needed to push my happiness, like, total town's happiness up to a certain goal just for that level, basically. Speaking of happiness, there was one level where I needed to push the total happiness of my population up to 65%, which is actually pretty tough. Like, happiness isn't the same as respect for, like, political winning ways. It's purely just for, like, how much growth your people have and how much they appreciate stuff. So naturally, I ignore it a lot, unless it's necessary, such as this mission. So, uh, here I needed 65%, I was down to my last year of the game, like, I had this, I had one year of in-game time left out of, like, 35 years to try and do this. I had a buttload of money, and I was about 5% of the happiness off. So what did I do? I just kinda maxed out everyone's salaries. I lost so much money because I had to pay everyone in the, in the whole island money, but at least they liked me at the end. Seriously, this actually works. You can just throw money at people and they'll all be happier in the process. So you may be wondering why I'm talking about this game in terms of like good game design. Basically what it does is that it satires like superpower politics, like basically. So on the one hand, being as self-centered as possible will completely get you wrecked when it comes to elections and money and all that stuff. Calling elections off too many times will encourage a revolution, either by rebels, your own soldiers, even the superpowers if you're crazy enough to anger them. 
But on the other hand, if you just kind of benefit your population, you, you invest all your money into stuff like schools and stuff, and you help these people out so much, you leave with nothing. Your score is terrible. You, you kind of end with, like, that wasn't really that challenging, but it also wasn't really that fun. I wasn't pushing myself. I wasn't getting anything out of it. And that's kind of the thing. Tropico ends up being a game where the two ideals, one being pure democracy and the other one being a pure dictatorship, kind of fall flat. And that's the social commentary here. The US is viewed as having the most idyllic capitalist society in the world, and the USSR is the most idyllic communist society. Both of them want you to become just like they are, but you can't, and you shouldn't. The reason why going pure capitalism or pure communism doesn't work is because it doesn't. In fact, trying to go where any of these extremist groups want you to go just won't work. You can't have an island with absolutely no industry just because it's good for the environment, and you can't have an island with absolutely no democracy just because the loyalists will know that you'll be in power. You can't have an island with just churches everywhere just because God told someone that I was the way. <laughs> I'm gonna quote TV tropes here. The message behind the game is extremely cynical. It basically says that all political leaders are there to either line their own pockets or just to hold power. Whether capitalist or communist, ideology is merely a way to obtain more power. The Cold War setting heavily reinforces this notion by having Tropico essentially be a very small pawn in a much larger game between the US and the USSR that is the same money-making, power-grabbing scheme on a larger scale. In addition, all of the factions are completely cynical examples, illustrating the worst of their particular group as a whole. The religious faction is full of puritanical moral guardians, the capitalists are greedy plutocrats, the communists want you to keep everyone equal regardless of skill or effort, the militarists are club-wielding black shirts, the nationalists are xenophobic shut-ins, the environmentalists are so knee-jerk hateful of industries such as logging that they would rather have people unemployed than working at a mill, the intellectuals are prone to offense at anything done to appeal to the uneducated, and the loyalists are universally depicted as boot-looking simpletons who measure a strong leader on how much he abuses his privileges, cultivates a near-religious cult of personality, and brutally oppresses the general population. That basically sums up everything Tropico is about. And you know, if you take Tropico just as a game, it's a little bit weak compared to the city-building giant of SimCity. For example, like, in Tropico, you can you can click on a person and you can see their individual needs, like, what exactly they they want from your island, but caring for one person doesn't really change anything in the game in the long run. In fact, it's really not recommended, because why would you care about a single person? Considering everyone as a whole is a much better way of approaching the game. But, may but this is the main reason I'm trying to get out for Tropico. It's just one of those games that every single element ties to this single message. Perhaps caring for this individual does nothing because that's life. That's large-scale government. Do governments care for the needs of individual people? No, they care for the needs of general populace. Anyway, as for the other games of the series, well... Ick. Yeah, I could bring it up again, but... I've played three the most, and I think it's one of the stronger examples. Four kind of deals with, like, Eastern powers as well, like China and stuff. You can grab Tropico 3 with its expansion pack, which gives a lot more content. And it's even kind of hard to grasp how on earth I bought it for $3 in a Steam sale. PC Master Race! <laughs>